Guys, I wanted to start this episode off by saying thank you to each and every one of you. This channel is over 200,000 subscribers strong. I never thought we would get here all those years ago when I fired up that Nikon Cool Picks and I did that Bubble Back episode. I, I had no idea that this would change my life so much. I had no real uh, intention of necessarily making this like my full-time job, but it... it it worked out. It worked out. And that's why at the end of every single live stream uh, that I do on this channel, I say, get out of your comfort zone and uh, it will pay off. And like, I'm kind of proof of this. So I just wanted to say thank you. I am in the process of making a dedicated 200,000 subscriber thank you episode. But for now, as a little treat, I wanted to give you a peek behind the curtain, so to speak, uh, when it comes to filming reviews. Now, that sounds kind of boring, but this is going to be some good tea. That's what the kids are calling it, right? Mmm. Mmm. Tea. Mm. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. You see, in my process of getting to 200,000 subscribers, and I think we have like a catalog of about like a thousand episodes already, or, or I, I, we've made an ungodly amount of content on this channel and I'm very proud of it. Hardest working channel on YouTube, baby. That's a, that's a lie, that is a lie. But in this process, not every episode and not every interaction that I've had has been splendid and pleasant. In fact, one sticks out three years ago we did a review, and it was just the worst. The worst. It is 4.15 p.m. Let's get down to business. Uh. Now, when I produce a review, all right, regardless of if my channel gets paid, and again, every time uh, there is a sponsored episode, you will see that little thing, Gato Show It, uh, that shows up. Uh, on the side of, of the, the YouTube window that YouTube makes us click. So anytime there's something exchanged uh, of value, you're supposed to click that legally because the FTC will like drop the hammer on you if, if, if they so choose. And you need to disclose that there was like value exchange. So regardless of if my channel got paid, part of our terms when it comes to other businesses working with us is that we have creative control over our content and our content will be 100% honest. Like literally in the term sheet that we send people, we say, hey, if you believe in your product, then go ahead, send it to us. We will work together and we will film the good and the bad. And guess what? Like 99.9999999999% of businesses that have wanted to work with us have been cool with it. And uh, guess what? If we've filmed it and we've uploaded it, then those 100% of those have been cool with it. Kind of. Because again, we, we have had some businesses talk to us and then we give them our terms and then they say, mm, can you... Can you not say the bad stuff? And then we're like, no, we're good. We're <laughs> now you're making it weird because now that you now you're worried about bad stuff. Now we think it's going to be bad. So and then, you know, they typically back out and then we just don't film anything. But again, like pretty much 100 percent of the time when we filmed something and uploaded it, the business has been cool with it because they've read and agreed to our terms. Now I say almost every time because there was one interaction that we've had, again, about three years ago, and it was probably the worst experience I've ever had reviewing a watch. Now I'm not going to say the name of this watchmaker. We're gonna be showing footage from the episode and Gato's gonna be blurring out the name because I don't wanna like directly put them on blast. It was a German watchmaker. You guys can snoop around uh, my backlog of episodes and you can do some super sleuthing if you wanna go watch it, but um, yeah, I was reviewing one of their watches and it, in my opinion, it was kind of a benign review. Like as always, it was thorough, it was honest. I had fun doing it. I did pros and I did cons. Pretty much exactly what I do with every review. Now what they took issue with was the fact that not only did I say the pros, but I also said the cons. Which is weird because like that's what a review is, especially on my channel. Like. I just tell you my opinion of the thing that I have here and they agreed to our terms. So let me just run it down for you. Um, 
I didn't really like the dial, that's my opinion. I found the font on the dial atrocious, that's my opinion. The movement was not running to COSC standards, which is just a fact. And the price was astronomical for what you get, which is just pretty much a kind of basic, ugly-ish watch. I mean, they were asking over $800 for this watch, which in my estimation, you know, it, it, it just didn't add up. Now, I didn't totally destroy this watch. I was just giving my opinion, my assessment. They wanted the watch on my channel because they value my opinion, right? Or my expertise, my knowledge, my insight. I don't know. Or maybe they just wanted advertising. Hmm. Well, if you want to have advertising, then you would probably hire someone in-house to produce content uh, as just some like fluff piece, but we don't do that here. Like, pretty everyone knows that. I am a psychopath. So what was the big deal? Why is this the worst experience I've ever had? Well, it's because the company went absolutely bonkers when I uploaded the episode. I uploaded it around the holiday season, which is kind of a contentious, high stress time for everyone, but specifically uh, in the retail space, you know, here's some insider baseball. Every year, like pretty much halfway through October, all the way through November and December, YouTubers typically get inundated with emails from businesses wanting to have products placed on channels. That's just how it works, right? That's their big money-making season. So of course they're gonna wanna get the most exposure possible. And this was no different with this company. Now I uploaded the episode and I was proud of it just like I am with every one of my episodes. And I thought, you know, we did a very good job on our side. And I thought that this was just gonna go off without a hitch, but I received numerous emails from this watchmaker with kind of like personal attacks. They were like insinuating that I didn't like the holiday, which I don't know if that's like a, I'm, Realizing now, I was, was that like a Jewish thing? You're fine when you're not really fine. Because the guy like wrote to me and he's like, you have ruined a holiday. I can only buy my children and my wife a book because you've ruined the holiday. And I'm like, dude, like, I'm sorry that your Christmas isn't what you wanted, but I don't think my video like made or broke your holiday. Like. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like literally, the guy said that he could only buy his kid and his wife a book for Christmas because it was my fault and I ruined Christmas. And I'm and I, and I guess because I'm Jewish, I just don't like the holiday. <laughs> I don't like Christmas. Every time I see a Christmas tree, I've, 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 just makes me want to eat bagels, locks and bagels and latkes and dreidels. Locks, bagels, latkes, dreidels. That's like a little, a little rap. And I mean, so easily, this was one of the most bizarre experiences I've ever had uh, when <laughs> working with watchmakers. And we've literally never had anyone complain. Like pretty much no one's ever complained about our episodes uh, when it comes to the watchmakers we've worked with. But there's a first for everything and you know, you're never gonna please everyone. So I'm used to getting hate and trolls in the comment section and, I, and I'm like the, the premier orological troll. So like, I love to see it. I'm not used to getting it from businesses that agree to work with us. So this was the first and uh, yeah. So, I mean, I figured this was, <laughs> I've gotten a bunch of questions during live streams. If I've ever had bad, like work relations, uh, work relations, that sounds naughty. <laughs> But usually it's because people want me to gossip about other YouTubers, but I've never had bad experiences with other YouTubers. And I just want to make it clear here, like I've never had bad experiences with, with other businesses, except for this one, which we will not name, but uh, you guys can go like find it. And, and, if, and if you think it's that one, then you might be right. You might be wrong. I'm not, I can neither confirm nor deny. So guys, this was just a little fun episode I wanted to um, address three years later. Not because like this was on my mind, but because we hit 200,000 subscribers and I just wanted to give you a little little piece of the puzzle here of what we deal with on the Time Teller channel. And, and you know, every piece of content I make, I make for you. Because without, without you, there's no channel. So I love you guys, each and every one of you. Thank you for, for being with me on this ride and stay tuned for uh, a dedicated 200,000 subscriber celebration thank you episode. All right, love you. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time telling. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. <laughs>
yeah, 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 yeah.